So the Blues have lost a little bit there, and you know the Chiefs have lost a little bit with Cruden going, and you know there's all of these teams. They might be on paper not quite as strong as they were last year. So which one of these teams do you think is a team that can match the Crusaders, considering how their squad it seems you know so even to what it was last year? Oh look, I obviously genuinely do think the Blues because I think it's another year of experience under some guidance of someone like Bodie and Dan in that environment, and now a lot of ownership and I suppose. Um, I suppose reins and control is given to these guys to step up and fill that void and, and I felt from what I saw on the weekend and I haven't been in um, with the squad at all um, you could see that there's a, there's a genuine expectation on themselves to step up and continue that ball rolling and, and from what you saw from the big guys that haven't had a lot of preseason, you know, like Rico, I just thought he was exceptional. His line speed defensively, his willingness to set up his teammates, his work rate off the ball, when you've got a leader like that delivering uh, in a preseason game with no points on the court, others are going to follow. And, and I think that's the most exciting thing for me. And you've got a guy like Oteri who has that balance of attack. You've got competition at nine between Finlay Christie, Sam Nock and, and Jonathan Ruru, who was exceptional on the weekend in key positions. And, and you've got a forward pack that is coached by Tom Coventry that are continuing to want to just roll their sleeves up. You've got a front three that are fighting for positions. I thought both Lutero Tolai and, and Kurt Eklund were exceptional on the weekend. You've got Nepo and Offa fighting out for tight head. You've got two All Blacks fighting out for loose head. You've got um, you know, Skipper and Paddy. You've got Tom Robinson. You've got Dalton Papali'i. You've got Blake Gibson. You've got Hoskins. You've got Akira. You know, you've got selection dilemmas. I'm sold. Do you know? I'm sold. That's, do you a know that, that's a depth and selection dilemmas. And so. What the Crusaders have done so well in the past is when they've had an injury, there's been another guy to step up. Or when they've had their fit full squad, competition has created and that's created an edge at training and that edge has continued on to the game and they've almost had a harder training on the Thursday than the game they've faced on the weekend. And that's the edge that I feel that is creating in that Blues environment at the moment. And I don't want to put pressure on them because I know that they're already creating that pressure themselves, but I genuinely think they're building a hard work ethic, a tough tough underbelly and a willingness to go above and beyond for their teammate and you saw that and as I mentioned in, in a player in, in Rico and what he did off the ball and his willingness to set up others uh, on the weekend in a game that didn't have any points on the line. Is that the way you see it Brent? Yeah, Jeff has got some great points here and I think it's just a um, it's going to be a flow and effect from the learnings that they had last year and you know Leon's been there and the coaching staff that they have there have been um, have been exceptional and you know you're looking at the results of last year you know they'd definitely be one of the teams that you'd be definitely looking out for. But um, I guess the team that I've seen, it's, I think it's recruited pretty well in, um, I think, the Highlanders. Um, the Highlanders have done really well in their recruitment with Tony Brown. And I think, you know, obviously Tony Brown being involved again with taking a, a, on the on the full has been, it's going to be great for them, bringing back that real Highlander mindset of, um, even though he was in the environment last year, I think, you know, him being able to, being able to be the, the head, head coach will be, will be massive for them. And, um, I guess the, just the players that they've signed, you know, like they like for their back line, you know, for Tully Pyre, who was really good for us, he's going to have more growth and he's going to be able to have more opportunities. I see him like a, very similar to Malakai Fikitoa, actually. And then, you know, Solomon Olemala, who's a great signing with their, with their back three, who they had a lot of, um, had a lot of young guys there last year and probably lacked that experience. And, you know, Solly has had a lot of time at the Chiefs and, you know, it wasn't too long ago he was knocking on the door for the All Blacks. So, you know, he'll get another, chance to have a great opportunity in an environment where he'll be playing a lot of footy and then I think they've just signed some really good key um, experienced players like Josh Honick who's come back and Brent Evans as well who will really add that experience to that group and and you know let's talk about Liam Squire who we know who New Zealand rugby who's you know is a, is a more of a talisman for them who sets the who sets the tone physically and um, you know just brings more depth into that loose four trio who who are, who are going to be um, fantastic with his, with his with his addition and then you know, you've got obviously Dylan Hunt that left, but you know, like Billy Harmon. Billy Harmon's gone down there as well, who's again seeking an opportunity, and um, you know, he's gone down to a fresh environment and he was with us for the last three years, and he's a guy that's um, you know can definitely play Super Rugby level. So, I just look at the Highlanders, and yes, they're probably um, not to the extent of where the Blues are and the depth that they have, but I think the acquisitions that they've made during that off season, and then um, one guy that I've also had a look around is, is Fakatava and his involvement that he's going to have off the off the bench. And you know he'll keep Nuggy, he'll keep Nuggy honest. But you know you look at how he played during the Mighty Cup and his his game management and how he how much he grew in the last in the last twelve months. You know, so he'll be massive for them coming off the bench. And um, personally, I know how, um, how hard it is to defend him 
um, you know, when he's starting, but coming off the bench when, when players are tired. And he's one guy that I'm definitely going to be looking forward to seeing uh, for the Highlanders this year. Who rounds out that loose forward trio? There's so many to oh. choose from. Is it Squire at eight, Frizzell at six, Lecce's a Harmon at seven, and Michele Tu coming off the bench? Is that oh, how it looks? If you watched the game the other day, I think Michele Tu has to start. Yeah. The, the way he played, the way he carried, I think he's in the eight jersey, and I think Frizzell's at six. And... and I mean, Lynchy's coming back from a pretty tough injury, was pretty impressive, scored a couple of tries, but I think Harmon has gone down there and he's probably got the inside running at the moment just because of that, um, you know, the injury that Jimmy Lynchy's is coming back. But he's a tough customer and really well liked in that environment. So I think that's going to be a hard fought battle, that seven jersey. But Harmon might get the nod going against his old uh, team this weekend because it's always a big occasion and you want to give that, you know, battle to, to, to Billy. And I just think, you know, we haven't seen Liam Squire play uh, pre-season, so he's obviously still got a bit of a niggle. And honestly, Marino the other day, his carries and, and his, his contacts and his collision work was exceptional. And he, he looks like he's going another gear, which is quite frightening because what he delivered last year in Super Rugby and then what he did for Hawke's Bay and now he, mm. what he's delivered in pre-season, he just, he, he's a serious beast and, and, and sort of... Yeah, I know he's, he was a rookie last year, but he's just going under the radar. Another loose forward, just to chuck in the mix for you know in that All Blacks sort of selection. He's he's been spoken about, but if he can back it up again, he he's just he's a hell of a hell of a worker, uh, in, in that Highlanders environment. And I, I must agree with Bryn on on the Highlanders and their recruitment, and led by Ash Dixon, who we know is exceptional in that that pack. But they've got the, the, the makings of a, of a great, hard-working team. You know, Josh Iwani's there, you've got Mitch Hunt. And based on their tactics, it, you know, Bryn talked about Tony Brown. They're the only team that I've actually noticed around that kicking strategy. You, you mentioned against you guys, Bryn, about trying to get those dropouts from around that halfway. They, they purposely kick, and then they really yeah. chase hard to try and force the dropouts. They did it again against the Hurricanes the other day, purposely tactically doing it. And then... They really don't want to kick dropouts because Garden Bashit put one against um, the Highlanders and, and Jonah Noriki was very relaxed, <laughs> just dawdling back and then he, he felt Garden Bashit coming and then he did a little side step and ran out and eventually kicked it out and did a lovely kick about 50 metres and got it out. But he wasn't prepared to put it down and do the dropout. So they've got a clear tactic that they obviously don't want to do the dropout but they really want to receive it because when they did receive it, Alo Marlow made great metres up the back, and I thought he looked great at fullback. I thought they might play him at, at, at wing, um, but he, he, he looked really good at fullback, um, Alo Malo. So it looked for him. I, I thought Connor Garden Bashup was pushing hard for a 15 start the way he's performed in pre-season out of nowhere. Uh, but I think Alo Malo, with his performance against the Canes the other day, will, will probably wear the 15.